Hi all. In today's session, uh, we are going to discuss about uh, best practices for scripting. Like, uh, what are the recommendations? Like, uh, how? Like, uh, I clearly mentioned each and every step. Uh, how we need to proceed with scripting, and uh, from where we need to start with scripting. What are the prerequisites? What are the things we need to take care? All this stuff we are going to discuss. Before before looking into it, uh, in last session I told you right. Uh, uh, we faced some issues with the Mozilla Firefox recording. Uh, before that, I will quickly uh, show you how to. Uh, record uh, and how uh, traffic is capturing uh, earlier uh, due to some uh, additional extensions and plugins i done some r&d on that and uh, uh, yesterday like i deleted all those uh, unnecessary uh, extensions and plugins uh, in uh, firefox and uh, now we can record uh, in firefox browser <clears throat> let me open jmeter first By the time JMeter is opening, let me check the settings of uh, Firefox. Uh, first thing, what we need to check, uh, we need to check the uh, whether the certificate was installed or not. View certificate. See here, we have already certificate installed in this browser. Okay. The first prerequisites is done. Next, you need to check the proxy. <clears throat> so here we need to check the manual proxy configuration, and uh, we need to give local host and port number. We are giving the same port number which we are giving in Apache JMeter, and uh, also check this uh, enable the checkbox checkbox like uh, so that uh, it will capture both HTTP as well as HTTPS traffic. Okay, click on OK close the firefox browser we can use the template <clears throat> click on create Okay. Launch. Go to some demo website. Register link. So just I'm stopping. I just want to show you how whether cap traffic is capturing or not. So see, if you see the launch request are captured, and uh, the register page uh, link was captured. So this is, this is how like uh, we are using uh, JMeter like uh, Mozilla Firefox uh, for JMeter recording. Okay. Now let's move to our actual topic. Today's uh, topic. Uh, What is today's topic like uh, we'll see like uh, step by step uh, how we need to uh, start with script recording okay first point is make sure application is accessible from the mission or vdi or system where we uh, record the script 
so uh, let's say you, you got any a uh, new project right uh, so sometimes uh, uh, you may need to do the script recording in, in your own mission sometimes what they will do like a client will provide uh, some vdis or remote missions and you need to uh, develop the scripts there because application is only accessible in those missions so before uh, uh, starting any scripting right you, you need to make sure application is accessible in the mission where you want to record the script okay this is the first point and second thing uh, be clear with the workflow so uh, uh, once you get the requirement uh, they will give uh, what are the critical business uh, scenarios identified in the application which is called nothing but workflows okay so those workflows like uh, should be very clear if you are having any doubts you, you may need to reach functional team or development team or business team and you may need to clarify each and every uh, questions you have okay it should be very clear and all the test data required should be like uh, handy okay so that uh, it won't create any confusion while recording and uh, sometimes like uh, if you record any uh, more number of scripts right if your script having uh, more number of uh, user actions like uh, 40 to 50 so all of a sudden at 30th 35th or 30th step you all uh, you got stuck so all those 30 uh, transactions or uh, user actions you recorded right it, it will be of uh, no use so to avoid the time waste like uh, and uh, redundancy of uh, the activity right uh, uh, please make sure uh, uh, you should be very clear with the workflow okay so next uh, once all this done, you need to you are already uh, covered in uh, our previous classes. Uh, it's always better to uh, open the JMeter, like uh, run JMeter bat as an administrator. Okay. Also, uh, clear catchy cookies of all the browsers. Like first, you need to clear catchy cookie in all the browsers or wherever the browser you want to record and uh, close all the tabs and uh, browsers. Uh, but better you can close all the browsers like. Uh, even though we are doing in uh, chrome right just better to close all the remaining browsers as well nothing wrong in that and uh, also another important point is uh, better to go with uh, incognito mode or uh, private mode of uh, browsers it's not mandatory but uh, it's recommended okay and uh, as i am showing like in from last previous classes like i'm showing like uh, initially i'm loading uh, uh, with the pre-existing template or also you can uh, add the thread groups, HTTP thread reporter, uh, view results tree, filters, all this like, uh, instead of doing all this manual effort, just I'm using the, leveraging the templates given by uh, JMeter. See, just now I showed you, right? Like this, uh, we can uh, go, just let me show you. Once we open the JMeter, it will be like uh, only we have test plan element in it, okay? so if you want to use templates directly you can uh, use this uh, recording template from here if you are going with web applications okay otherwise you can also uh, add it manually how can you add it manually first you need to add a thread group okay this is to store the all recorded actions okay and next you need to add a non-test element which is called https script recorder okay this is uh, responsible to capture the all the traffic and under uh, http script recorder you need to add a uh, listener this is to capture the recording log okay this is to capture recording log so under thread group you need to add a config element called uh, http cookie manager I will tell you what's the importance of this HTTP cookie manager for the time being. Just uh, keep it in mind like uh, whenever we uh, do recording, like uh, or mainly it, it will be required during the script replay. During replay, if, if during recording, if you forget to add HTTP cookie manager, it's nothing harm. But when you are replaying the script, right, then definitely we need cookie manager. So also you can add a view results tree. Listeners. So these two, we can add after recording also. It's not mandatory to add the during recording. The mandatory things we need to add recording is uh, uh, these two. Okay. And another thing, another thing uh, 
if you want you can add the recording controller see why we are using recording controller is here we have an option clear all the recorded sample like when when any any people who started uh, uh, learning jmeter right uh, so in the initial stage it will be useful because like if something you recorded uh, uh, wrong or uh, if traffic is not captured correctly uh, we, you don't need to always uh, close the script and again reopen the new script just if you click on clear all recorded samples whatever the samples captured under recording controller will be cleared mainly it will be useful while during the practice uh, purpose okay uh, if you don't want this is nothing like uh, you can delete this that is not at all a problem But but remember guys, if uh, if you go to te HTTP test script recorder, by default uh, the target controller was selected as a recording controller. Okay, if you delete this recording controller, go and see HTTP script recorder. Still the HTTP user recording like a, a target controller will be like uh, the default one is use recording controller. So if you not adding user recording controller under thread group you may need to change this one to thread group so that whatever the traffic capture right it will it will sit under uh, thread group okay uh, so here better to go with this option put each group in a new transaction controller so that whatever the user action you you are performing right each user action will sits under uh, one unique uh, transaction controller new transaction controller okay like this uh, we can add uh, all this manually or we can uh, use the templates so if you see here we have a few templates right if you want uh, we can create our own customized templates as well that part i will show you uh, later for the time being just you can use the existing templates or you can create your own uh, 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 this structure thread group http script recorder and all okay so uh, this part we covered uh, and after that uh, we need to save and save script and uh, recording log okay so if you see i already told you like uh, recording log uh, is very important for us so where we need to set the recording log view results tree which is under http script recorder will act as a recording log so here we can give uh, the path of the recording log so what is the default uh, recording log like uh, uh, the recording log extension is XML file. So go to uh, let me. So another thing I will I would like to show you. Uh, just I uh, created one folder called scripts, which is under uh, bin folder. Okay. So here I am creating one new folder. Script one. Okay, just I'm putting one folder called script one. It's always good practice to maintain all the uh, files. Like let's say uh, if you say the script file is nothing but JMX file, and uh, the recording log is XML file. Let me create one XML file here. underscore recording log dot xml so i created a script one underscore recording log so here 
you need to go to view results tree which is under http script recorder and browse that file just ignore that one okay uh, that warning it is telling like it is empty just ignore that warning no, that's not at all uh, a problem so in in the options like uh, if you uh, enable this log viewer you can see the log uh, at the bottom whenever required we can uh, enable that one so we have uh, given the recording log and we need to save the script so once this was done right let, let's save this script so what i'm if you see here i am saving the script also in under the scripts folder so script folder script one folder is nothing but it will store all the files related to script one script one Okay, save. So script was saved and uh, we already set this uh, recording log. So another important thing like uh, don't use any spaces or special characters in the script name. Good practice to maintain folders for each script so that's what we done right just uh, we are putting all the files uh, related to script one under this uh, script one only okay what's next start script recording so before starting script recording whatever the flow we we are going to record just we will go through once so in previous at the end of previous session i told you like uh, we are we are taking parabank website and uh, in that parabank website we identified uh, two critical uh, business scenarios like workflow one uh, is uh, user registration and workflow two is uh, fund transfer let's go with this uh, first one we'll check uh, whether uh, we are able to uh, access these steps manually first then we'll, we can start with the script recording go to parabank website so launch application is done click on register link register link here is the register link i clicked on register link so uh, PT user triple zero one. Just I'm giving some dummy address. Click on register. Uh, your account was created successfully. You are logged in. Okay. What's our step? Enter all mandatory fields and click on register button. After that, we need to click on uh, log out. 
just want to check uh, oh it is throwing some internal error okay anyhow that it's not our uh, business uh, requirement so just click on log out once let me check uh, whether uh, just now i created one user right i just want to try whether we are able to log in with that user or not uh, your user is pt user 001 password same pt user 001 let me click on login oh looks like uh, application is not stable you guys like, like uh, this, this, we are using uh, some demo applications right these these applications are not maintained by us just we are trying to leverage a few demo applications which are uh, openly available for us to practice so i think uh, better to go with another application because uh, see uh, just now i created one user right i'm not able to log in with that user so let me check if we have any other uh... okay i think uh, we have let's try this one we'll see there is another website called automationpractice.com uh, here also we'll take a similar kind of uh, example user registration application launch sign in on a under create user action Let, let's uh, navigate this flow as well manually first just find out the more automation okay this is the website i'm looking for let's uh, go with this website what's the workflow we are having launch application then we need to click on sign in where is the sign in yeah here is the sign in button looks like this website is little bit slow okay after that under create an account section enter unique email id to create account and then click on create an account button okay here i need to give a unique account okay what is the unique account go with the same pt user pt user 00001 at the rate k e n ken dot com okay it's giving a, a green symbol and uh, so th this user is available for us click on create account so it's now getting to other page where it is asking all the personal information enter all the mandatory fields and click on register button the fourth step is we need to enter all the mandatory details title mr pt user oh what is the problem maybe it's not accepting uh, numbers i think pt user 1 email already it's auto populated password we'll go with uh, pass pass 1 2 3 hash five characters minimum okay it is also accepted you can give some uh, random date of birth okay 
can go with any year it's not mandatory fields first name again it's not a populated company name is not a mandatory just i'm leaving that address address one this is not top mandatory city you can give hyd so state we can select any thing zip code we can give uh, any five digits number state us home phone number is not mandatory mobile phone number is mandatory assign an address alias for future reference address to so click on register okay so uh, this user got uh, registered successfully what's the user we created uh, put, uh, this is the username and uh, password is into three hash okay if you see here uh, the perf test pt user one pt user one first name and last name okay just click on sign out okay guys i think uh, we can start recording this flow now uh, we'll do it in uh, chrome let's enable the proxy save jmeter <coughs> I'm going with uh, template. Let me open the browser in uh, incognito mode. Let me clear cache and cookie once. Let's start the recording. I'll give T zero one underscore launch or simply I will give launch first. Later we can give the naming conventions launch we launch the application first so application was launched what is the next step we need to do click on sign in before clicking sign in give the transaction name sign in then click on sign in so after sign in we need to
give one unique uh, email address, right? What's the email address we've given earlier? We'll go with two now. Okay, it's a valid. Oh, before clicking uh, create account, we need to give the transaction name. Create and create an account. Okay, after here we need to fill all the details and we need to click on register button. So before doing that, uh, let me give this transaction name first. Register. Register. Same password I'm giving pass one two three hash P caps. Then we need to give any date of birth. First name last name company name is not mandatory. Just leave that a bank. Okay, address we'll give address one. It's not an optional city. Any, any. So this is the demo application. Don't worry, guys. Just I'm giving some data because uh, in US uh, we don't have this Hyderabad right city. Don't don't uh, bother about this. Home phone number is not mandatory, and mobile phone number will give some number. Address. Okay, uh, just I'm clicking on uh, register button. Okay, registration was done. What is the next step in our flow? Click on home. So here we are seeing home button, right? Before clicking home, you need to give the, so, so remember guys, for every, each and every click is nothing but a user action, right? So for each and every user action, we need to give the transaction name. Click on home. So why we are giving these unique transaction names? Whatever the user action we are performing, right? Those traffic will capture under uh, this transaction. So click on home is completed. And uh, what is next? Click on log out or sign out. Sign out. Click on sign out. <coughs> So sign out done successfully. Now you can stop the recording and close the browser. If you see, if you expand this uh, recording controller, we are able to see traffic was captured under recording controller. But if you see a launch is, you're seeing launch three times, sign in through two times, create account and again register four times. Let me zoom. Okay, and uh, click on home, sign out. If you see the, these things, uh, few few requests are like uh, recorded twice. Let's open this one.
so here if you go to fourth uh, part like verify the request captured by jmeter once recording is over remove or filter unnecessary or third party url from the script check if all the traffic of workflow is captured or not sometimes we need to remove or move or change the disable the request according to our workflow so in jmeter like uh, it's our responsibility to validate this part and not only in jmeter in, in other tools also uh we may need to uh validate uh, these steps whether it, it got properly got recorded or not let's see this uh, first expand this uh, la first launch transaction if you see this launch which is uh, automationpractice.com which is our website if you see this one fonts.googleapi so this is not required simply you can delete this one okay next expand the second one it, it is also google apis 109 121 this also some unnecessary request next is facebook next is facebook so all these four requests under the second launch transaction controller is not relevant to our website which which we recorded so you can delete entire uh, transaction controller so that it will delete all the all the sections then expand the last last one this is also related to google apis so you can delete this as well so uh, you may you may get one question uh, sir we already uh, have uh, include have the exclude patterns why still we are seeing the those uh, unnecessary uh, urls got recorded so before starting any application right uh, you may need to record uh, some sample flows or uh, at least like a home page login or uh, some some flow navigation two to three steps so then you you came to know what are the unnecessary requests uh, it's capturing google api is gstatic.com again you need to capture all those uh, unnecessary uh, url uh, patterns and uh, you need to include uh, you need to you need to place it in the urls patterns to exclude so that uh, in your actual script recording session these unnecessary urls won't capture okay i already covered in our previous classes how to uh, add this uh, url packs and patterns to exclude and uh, how can we put the url patterns to include all this uh, we already discussed in our previous classes okay so uh, launch transaction is clear okay then let's move to sign in transaction if you go to click on sign in this is automatonpractice.com and another uh, http request it is also automationpractice.com if you see this uh, 141 sign in hyphen 141 it is related to google apis okay you can delete this simply you can delete click on delete button in the keyboard okay expand another one sign in 143 it's related to microsoft again 144 is related to google apis 145 is related to office apps so you can you can delete entire uh, sign in the second uh, sign in uh, transaction controller you can delete because all the http requests captured under second sign in is not related to or uh, relevant to our application okay so here here you are seeing uh, th there is two http request captured under sign in and the second 135 is uh, automatically disabled so you may get this question why it was disabled we will, we will cover that part uh, in our in today's session or uh, coming upcoming sessions don't worry about that next expand this create account section here automationpractice.com again this is uh, something related to google apis 149 149 149 and 159 149 and 150 we can delete next click on register okay it's not related to our uh, application this is also not related to our application so first to register 
you can delete or disable better like uh, if it is not required right better to delete why why to create uh, unnecessary confusion go to another register here also all these three are not related to our application delete this as well there is another register automationpractice.com so th this is related to r only and this, this there is another 161 it is also automationpractice.com and uh, 163 it's not uh, related to automationpractice.com and this is also not related to automationpractice.com so you can delete these two all as well okay next go to click on home automationpractice.com this is also automationpractice.com uh, 167 and 168 these two are uh, related to facebook so these two are also not related to our uh, application so i removed those two next go to sign out sign out button 170 automationpractice.com 171 automationpractice.com 172 is related to facebook it is not relevant request so we can delete 172 and 173 delete okay so so this this part is completed we filtered or deleted unnecessary requests from the recorded uh, script next we need to go to fifth section add below to for each thread group http cookie manager and http cache manager so if you see http cookie manager is must and http cache manager is optional so uh, for now just ignore this one i will i will uh, cover this part uh, in tomorrow session or the day after tomorrow i don't want to confuse you guys so for the time being uh, already we added uh, http cookie manager and what here it is telling put the clear catchy clear cookies each iteration okay and for these transactions we will enable generate parent sample and this part also i will let you know uh, for the time being just enable this it's not mandatory but uh, based on the requirement we need to enable this but i will tell you that requirement uh, by today end of the session okay or tomorrow and this sixth part also i will cover after so once script recording is done uh, okay we, we recorded a script to create uh, this user right let let me log in with this user first whether it got created or not uh after you need to off this proxy server if, if you want off this proxy server you're not able to access the internet always it is uh, very important like uh, whatever the user action we performed with the script right why even though it's while recording the script or replaying the script just make sure uh, that was reflected in the application or not because just we recorded script to create a pt user 0002 at the rate can.com right so always better to check whether that user got created or not click on sign in okay it was created you can sign out so let's see the script step by step what it was captured <clears throat> you see the all this uh, recording log was captured in uh, view results tree <clears throat> so okay 
I think we need to save this recording along because uh, we freshly created the template script, right? Let's save this. Uh, <clears throat> Let me create one folder first. So script folder will be like uh, we use the automation practice, right? Just I'm giving AP. It's nothing but automation practice underscore yes zero one which is nothing but script name script numbering and uh, the script to be recorded was user registration okay this is like uh, i created uh, the script the folder sorry so uh, i created the folder name with uh, ap automation practice underscore s01 underscore user registration so save this uh, script there not to rgg meter bin scripts so ap underscore s yes, zero one underscore user user registration okay and and uh, remember guys uh, <clears throat> before and before starting the enhancement of the script right uh, it's good practice to uh, save one backup copy as well Because why we are putting the backup, uh, let's say, uh, when, while doing the enhancements, uh, you may delete some elements and uh, you can't uh, uh, undo that. So then it will be uh, helpful if you keep a backup copy of this. Okay. So uh, next part is saving the recording log. So uh, where it was uh, saved. By default, it will save in bin director, right? Go to bin director. Uh, this is the recording log. Copy the recording log from here and uh, So uh, see guys, uh, I'm, I'm uh, defining some standard process. Why we need to follow this process? Let's say you want to do any uh, new performance testing project where you have 50 scripts. So if you save uh, scripts and uh, supporting files and recording uh, logs with your uh, like uh, some different names, right? It will be very uh, difficult to uh, identify which file is related to which file and uh, during the execution or any other after enhancements or like if you want to debug the script right it will it will be very difficult so to make our lives easy we need we need to process some follow some standard process like this like we need to create separate folder for each script and we need to place all the files related to those files uh, those script in one folder it will be uh, making us our lives easy okay it will be like uh, we can say maintenance script maintenance will be very easy okay uh, let's uh, look into this first transaction if you see uh, this is just uh, the application launch url we accessed and if you go to sign in just it is going to sign in button uh, when we click on sign in link it is going to my accounts uh, part right and then go to create an account in this transaction what we done we have given unique uh, so uh, 
I want to create uh, some user with PT user 002. Whatever the user email ID I have entered during recording, it was captured under this value. After that, go to register. If you see whatever the information I have entered in this step, all the mandatory fields by clicking register button was captured here. So gender, it was one. It means uh, we are seeing uh, Mr. and Mrs. Right? Maybe uh, Mr. indicates one and uh, Mrs. indicates two. Okay. He, this is the first name. PT user two. Last name also I given the same number. PT user two. Email uh, which I we have given in the create account uh, user action. It, it was same here as well. And password I have given is pass one two three hash. And if you see this uh, days months year, this is the date. And again, it's these two are uh, first name and last name. Com as company is not mandatory field, I given left it as a blank. Address one and address two is uh, blank because it's not a mandatory field. City Hyderabad. And if you see ID underscore state, uh, I think uh, this is something related to. If you see here state we have a drop down in the drop down we have a lot of values maybe uh, but in the script it was uh, captured as the value was captured as numerical value maybe what they may do right uh, the first state if you select the first state it will be one if you select second state it will be two like that uh, uh, we have selected some state which is 11 in the 11th position that, that is recorded as 11 okay the postal code this is the user input we have only given country is also same like uh, maybe they have defined uh, for us they have defined 21 uh, if you see phone number it is a user input given by us address to all, all this stuff was uh, given by us only okay But if you see in this create account section, there is one value called token. So this we didn't give this uh, token. This was generated by server only. So we can say this as a dynamic value. Okay. So we will uh, see how to handle dynamic values in uh, future sessions. Uh, in, in today's session, we are going to uh, looking into first. We will start with the handling uh, this uh, static. Uh, values handling input parameters given by the user to simulate real production behavior okay if you see in uh, create account section we have given this pt user 0002 at the rate ken.com this is the email given by us so it's a input parameter given by the user and in register page also all these uh, fields we, we only given right so all these are uh, inputs given by user okay so uh, first we'll cover how to uh, handle the uh, input parameters given by user okay so uh, i want to create another user with uh, pt user 0003 okay so what i need to do i no need to open the browser and uh, uh, give all the details because i already captured all the process process business process workflow using our script let me close this browser so i want to create new user with the help of this script okay so what i need to do in the script i need to give uh, under create account first as per the workflow first we are giving this email id here right I, instead of 02 i am giving 03 okay this is the first change the same user i need to give here as well 03 let me change this as well first name and last name And where another where yeah here also I will change you, 
if you want you can change these details otherwise it will it will accept this as well okay so before running this script uh, what i'm trying to do is i want to create a new user with pt user 0003 at the rate can.com let me show you first access the application oh shit again this application is also throwing some errors this is the problem is when we are dealing with the demo application site right? sometimes <laughs> it will create these kind of issues okay you can't do anything with this site right now okay guys let's save the script and we will discuss uh, continuation part tomorrow so you guys have any questions If you don't have any questions, uh, we'll close this session for today. Arvind, do you have any question? Yes, yes, I have one question. So uh, yes, while yes. we are doing, uh, while we are while we are recording script in. Uh, uh, I mean remote machines, uh, will the JMeter treat the uh, same as a uh, local machine or do we need to add any job files, plugin files for that? No, no, no. Nothing required. See, first you need to... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have we have already uh, discussed a few prerequisites, right? First prerequisite is in the remote machine, are you able to access that application or not? That is first thing. And after that, second prerequisite is to use the JMeter is you need to have access to change the browser proxy. Okay. That is one of the important prerequisites because uh, I already shown in uh, many projects like uh, um, in, in few projects, uh, they, they will give some uh, remote VDIs and uh, they don't allow us to change the proxy. If they they are not giving access to change proxy, right? It is very difficult to uh, like uh, use the J meter. In that case, we need to go with uh, Blaze meter plugin. But uh, I can't say like uh, that is completely accurate. Uh, better always better to have proxy. Like we we need to request that. Uh, team uh, whoever given the remote mission right we need to explain that uh, if we want to develop the script using jmeter we need a proxy to be enabled in that mission so if those two is done definitely you can uh, 
record the scripts there is no any additional settings or uh, any additional jar files required okay okay any other questions Mm, yeah, yeah, no. That's it. Okay, okay. thanks, Adi. Okay, guys. Uh, uh, because uh, unfortunately, like uh, this demo application got down, right? We are not able to proceed further and. Uh, We'll resume our uh, session tomorrow. Uh, anyhow, uh, we are already out of time. Uh, this is the problem with uh, these uh, uh, websites, actually. Uh, demo websites. Uh, if you see, like uh, the parabank.com is also giving, throwing some matter, right? <laughs> now, uh, this website is also throwing. That's the reason, uh, like, when you are is practicing, right? Uh, always uh, go with these dead properties. Like, uh, don't test it with uh, 10 users, 20 users, because uh, it will crash the demo application. We, we not, we are not sure like when that application will be back. 